this uh, video, I am literally going to be going over some invoices uh, from Coburn's, from Lennox. I literally have no idea what any of these are, but I'm going to search them, see what I need to do to them. Do I have to receive them? Uh, what is it? I, I just, I don't know for each one of them, so we're going to go through them. So one of the big things that you can do in order to find uh, all of the stuff on here, reading the actual uh, invoice from Coburn's, the top of it is your invoice number, 406-202-204. Uh, it's picked up, invoice date, 1215. Um, customer PO, that's the PO we give them, is 26677. Uh, who processed it over there is going to be Jonathan Leto. And what did we actually purchase? We actually purchased a 10 by 6 bright white enamel steel three-way register. Uh, another register, another register, another register. So we, we purchased four different types of registers, which are grills that we put up. So this is the easy way to pull up this um, PO. The easy way is you hit search up at the top there, it drops it down, and you just put the PO number in here, 26677, 26677. If I pull that up, it's going to give me that purchase number, purchase order on 1215 right here. This is a dispatch and this is an invoice. I'm looking for a purchase order with that number, so I would select it. It brings me right to the PO, so I can do everything from there. You could also get out of there and you can go to PO list and I am looking for that PO number which is 266777. 266777. 77. Now, I key that in there. It also brings me to the same exact PO right here and then I would have to double click it. And if I double click it, it brings it right up. So actually the easy way to pull up the PO is going to be, I'm going to get out of there is hit search at the top right right here and then right here by the little hour I mean uh, little glass right there you're gonna hit 26677 it pulls you up your purchase order you click it you bring it it brings it right to you now I'm gonna give you some things on this purchase order that I'm looking for because I literally have no idea what I'm doing with this particular one. I know I have the invoice here and I just pulling it up saying, okay, well, where are we with this and what do I need to do with it? So as I pull that up, the first thing I am reading on here is I am reading a 10 by 6 grill, 12 by 6 grill, 12 by 12 grill, and a 10 by 10 grill. Well, in the description, they have return grill on here. Well, I know it's not return grill. It is supply grills. So I'm just going to delete the return grills on the description and put supply grills. Now, I do not have to put every line item on here and make a specific line item for 10 by 6 grill, 12 by 6 grill, 12 by 12, and a 10 by 10. I just put supply grills on there because it really doesn't matter how many I'm purchasing of each one of them. The only thing that really and truly matters is that my total at the end of it is $94.50. So we do not keep an inventory of each one of these grills to where I literally have got to go into the computer and actually type in 10 by 6 grill, 10 by 10 grill, 12 by 6 grill, and literally accept every line item for there and how many there in order for it to put it in inventory for us to put it right back out in inventory when we put it on the job. Don't have to do all that stuff. All I literally have to do is just put miscellaneous change out because these are grills for an install job at 401 Bel Armand. So the shipping address to that particular job is 401 Bel Armand. The job right here is 401 Bel Armand. The dispatch is 157-164. Department is new construction. I am purchasing $94.50 worth of supply grills. I'm going to go down to the bottom in my memo down there and I am going to put the invoice number of 406-202-204. That will give me and be able to finalize this particular um, PO. So my next thing I'm going to do in order to process PO 
is I'm going to go save and receive. Now, one of the things that I'm looking at is this is an invoice because it says invoice at the top. If I go to this Coburn's ticket, and here's your difference. This is a ticket. It's a packing slip. So there's your difference. This one says invoice. This one says packing slip. I do not do a PO and receive a PO off of a packing slip. These get emailed to us basically every single day. The invoices get emailed to us every single day. The guys are going to turn in a packing slip. So when they go purchase this Remy Halo here, that day or the next day, I'm going to get an email invoice to me with that Remy Halo, but on an invoice, not a packing slip. The packing slip is what the guys pick up when they purchase that particular item. They bring the packing slip back to you. From there, you hold the packing slip till you get the invoice. And here's what will happen. Your packing slip has a Remy Halo on it. When you get the invoice, they went back in there two minutes later and they go, oh, by the way, I need a transformer too. Oh, by the way, I need this, that, and the other thing. And they will put the rest of that stuff on that same ticket. So they're going to have the packing slip in their hand that doesn't have the rest of the stuff on there. When you get the invoice emailed to us, it's going to have four items on there because they went back in or did it at a later time. You know, same day, same time frame, just, just five minutes later. After it was all done, they walked back in there and said, oh, by the way, I need this. So they put it on the same invoice. When you get the invoice, the rest of that stuff is on there. So when your packing slip, and I'm making this up here, when your packing slip has a Remy Halo on it with a serial number, you got to look at that too. But when you get the invoice... It has the Remy Halo, and I'm making this part up. It has Malco on it, Malco Tools. you got to question the rest of that stuff of what is it and why did you purchase it. And then you have to actually go to the invoice itself that, was, that this was purchased for, and you have to actually see what was sold on that job. So I'm going to make this up, just for argument's sake, and say that somebody purchased the Remy Halo. Then they walk back in there and go, oh, well, can you put that uh, nut driver on there too? Um, yeah, just process that through there with the nut driver. Well, it was a tool they purchased for themselves that they tried to pass through on the purchase order of the Remy Halo, thinking that we wouldn't catch it. If I catch them trying to put tools on my account and pass it through on a job, then I'm going to find out who signed for it and when I find out who signed for it, then I'm going to actually say, okay, you know, George, you signed for this uh, nut driver, which was $11. Well, I'm going to charge you $22 for it because you tried to steal it from me is what you tried to do. Oh, no, I didn't. No, you know, when you do a, when you are purchasing a tool, you purchase the tool and the PO you use is your name and you put it by itself. You tried to put the nut driver on the invoice with the Remy Halo and try to pass it through. So now I'm going to charge you $22 when it costs me $11. i am going to double the price on it and take it out of their check. So it is what it is. Now they don't do it. So that very rarely happens, but if it does happen, that, that, that's, that's how we handle it. Um, so here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go save and receive on that particular invoice with these supply grills. Let me pull that supply grill up. Now remember, this is my invoice. Okay. Now what job is this for? I got 26677 as my PO. So now I need to take a pen and I need to put on here, this is for 401 Bel Armand. Now. 401 Bel Armand, I'm going to put on there. So anytime I look at an invoice, <coughs> I've already did the work. I looked up the PO. So if you go look at this invoice right here, there's no reason in hell you should pull this PO back up again and just look to see what PO that's for. I should have already written it on here, which just saved you time. So I write 401 Bel Armand on there. 
And if I did pi on here, pi, which is, is it paid, is it an inventory, and is it an equipment? Or is it invoiced, and is it an equipment? So if I was to do pi, which was normally we only do that for uh, parts that are purchased for installs and also for some service work, is are these grills paid for yet? The answer is no, they're not paid for because this job is not 100% complete and the entire job has not been billed. Um, so therefore, is it paid for? The answer is no. Is it an in inventory? The answer is no, because grills do not go in inventory. Only equipment. Uh, I'm sorry, is this invoice? The answer is no, it is not invoiced at this point in time because supply grills is to finish the job. And this is just grills, it's not equipment. The pie is normally for what we're purchasing for service invoices or for e installs. Is it in equipment? The answer is no, it's not in equipment because it's not equipment, it's grills, it's parts, okay? So my pi is no, no, no on there, but I put 401 Bell Arm on, and then I would either have a stamp on here, and I will also, because I don't have a stamp, it would say received on it, so I'm just going to write received. So now, if anybody looks at that particular piece of paper again, they don't have to go in the computer to see if it's been received. I wrote it on here. So when you do work, make sure that somebody else doesn't have to go behind you to see if you did your work because you're going to write it on the ticket. So who is it received by? It's received by Eric. So your line item, your type is item, your item is miscellaneous change out, your description is supply grills, on order is one. Even though you purchase 710 grills, it's one because you purchase one supply grills. Quantity, because you're receiving this, is going to be one. The total price of the job, unit cost, $94.50. The amount is $94.50. The warehouse is going to be 000 warehouse. The job is the 401 Bel Armand, because that's what this is for. The apartment is new construction, and then the dispatch is was already done because of the PO, so it already pulls it up on there. Now... I have now received that particular PO. So now that I've clicked the unit uh, quantity price on there, I'm receiving it. Now I'm going to hit save and bill. When I hit save and bill, it says, do you wish to mark the purchase order as billed? The answer is yes. Now, you remember the invoice number that we had on here before, and I put it in the memo down at the bottom. One of the things that you will learn how to do is before you hit save and bill and you put the, the invoice number down at the bottom in the memo, you always copy it. So when you copy it and you finish doing the receiving of that particular item, then it asks you to create a bill and it's going to ask you for the invoice number. So then you would actually be able to come in here and right click and hit paste on it, which I did not save it, so I have got to type it in. And you're gonna type in the invoice number, which is at the top here at 406202. 406202. Uh, 202, 204. And then the date is today is 12-19-22. But you wanna put the date of the invoice right here so it actually pops up in order on our QuickBooks as well. So you're going to change this from 1219 to 1215 because this is the actual date on the invoice. Then you are going to hit OK. Then it disappears. So on this invoice, I am complete with this invoice. There's literally nothing else I have to do with this invoice at all. 
I have billed it. It's over in QuickBooks. I have a bill in QuickBooks for $94.50 on Coburn's account. This has been highlighted with the PO. The customer's address is on there. I put it on there, received it. I got the pie on there. No, no, no on it. There's nothing that anybody has to do when they grab this particular per, uh, invoice. There's nothing they have to do on here. And if they're looking for something, I have it written so you don't have to redo the work on it. If you didn't write anything on it and I want to see if you received it and I want to verify all the information, I got to go back to it and do everything you just did and then I'd actually have to write it on so the next person wouldn't have to do it. So that particular invoice is done and over with. So again, I'm going to make this point. So I have a Remy Halo here. I have a Mars voltage surge protector on this one. And remember, these say packing slip on it. This is not an invoice. I cannot do, I cannot receive that item off of a packing slip. So I am looking for an invoice here that says invoice on it. I am looking for, and I may or may not have it on here, that specific invoice for that matches the um, packing slip, which in this case I do not have. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with a packing slip, and I'm just going to say for argument's sake, and I may have it already, but for argument's sake, I have not received the invoice for from Coburn's it has not been emailed to me it has not been verified so just for argument's sake I'm going to show you what I can do with this packing slip before I actually get the invoice from Coburn's and this could happen a couple different ways I could have purchased this Remy Halo underneath PO number 26675 and then 10 minutes later the customer said, never mind, I, I don't want it. And I could have walked right back into Coburn's, gave it back to them, canceled the PO, or the PO never got canceled. I just gave it back to them. They never issued me an invoice for it. But yet, they gave me this originally. So I had it in my truck and I just turned it in with my paperwork. So I have a packing slip for something that you never get an invoice for. And the PO is still going to be in the computer. So one of the things that needs to be done is we have to do a constant check on POs to see that is that PO and has that PO ever been used. <coughs> and I'm saying that the PO has been used for Remy Halo. But you didn't even know that he walked in there, purchased it, walked out. Customer said, never mind, I don't want it. He walked back in there, gave it back to him. They canceled the invoice, but he just turned you the ticket in as though we purchased it. So that's why you cannot receive an item on a packing slip. You can receive it on an invoice, but not a packing slip. An invoice is they're invoicing you. A packing slip says that somebody was there and it's a start. So I'm gonna pull this packing slip purchase order number up, which is 26675. Remember, I'm typing in in the search bar right here in this little area above the blue line. I go to the purchase order right here and the purchase order is at 24, 2301 Brooklyn Avenue, and it's for one Remy Halo, which makes no sense. And the reason I say that makes no sense is why would we be purchasing one Remy Halo? And I actually know the answer to this. The reason it is for one Remy Halo, and this is the kind of weird things that come up that, um, you know, you kind of figure, well, how do I figure this out? What do I do with it? In this particular case, um, we had a Remy Halo that was returned and they gave us a new Remy Halo and then another one happened to be shipped to us as a warranty. So they gave us two Remy Halos, by accident I'm going to call it, when we returned one. So therefore, we literally owed them for one Remy Halo because they gave us, they gave us two when they should have given us one. But it was at two different times. 
So they call us up and they go, hey, you know, y'all purchase these all the time. Do you want to return the Remy Halo that you have there in your shop? Or do you just want us to go ahead and bill you for it and you'll sell it at a later time? Well, I need some Remy Halos in my shop because I'm, I'm out of them. So I said, yeah, we'll just go ahead and purchase it. So that's why there is no dispatch number and the job number is actually the shop here at 2301 Brooklyn. So with that being said, I am going to put the serial number on here, which the serial number is actually right here. Now, remember anything that you search for and you look for and you verify on this packing slip or invoice, you got to highlight this stuff because when you highlight it, that lets somebody else know that you actually did some work on it. Okay, that somebody is kind of ahead of the game. So I'm going to put the serial number. <coughs> and that serial number is B3WRHL239. All right. Now, quantity is one, the price, $429.63. So I'm going to change the price, $429.63. I'm going to save this right here, and my invoice number down in the memo. Now remember, I cannot complete this thing because my invoice is not here yet. But I am going to assume that my packing slip and my invoice when it comes in is going to be identical. Which, if nothing has changed on this thing, my invoice number is always going to stay the same, but my total may change if somebody walked back in there and added the transformer in here, okay? So that would, they'd have to actually go change the uh, price in here if somebody added something to it, or they would actually do a miscellaneous service part if they went and added the capacitor to it. So they had put miscellaneous service in here, what they actually purchased, which is in this case, I'm just saying a, a capacitor, add the price to it, and then the total would then change to whatever the new total is. So what I just did right here was I just prepped this PO for when we get the invoice, I literally would just now go to, I'd pull the invoice up and I'd be looking at the invoice and I would go, Okay, wait, okay, that's the serial number in there. Invoice number is correct down at the bottom here. My total price is $429.63. Okay, now, since I literally have the invoice in my hand, then I can hit save and receive. At this point in time, since I made my changes on everything, and this is going to be correct. Um, this is going to be correct when I get it, when I get the invoice. So I just hit save and I leave it alone. And I leave my pack and slip with just highlighted on the invoice number, PO, serial numbers, and price so that somebody knows that I did something to this. There's nothing else I can do with this until I literally get my invoice in. So I'll put that on the side. All right. Next one is PO number 26670. Again, this is a packing slip. So we're going to see what this particular one is. This is a surge protector. So somebody typed in surge protector and put the item number, which is an AC320-45, which is a surge protector. My total price, which is not going to be this specific surge protector. Because this specific surge protector is going to be a 2,000, excuse me, a 20,000 amp surge protector for $221, okay? Now, we're going to look at this PO, and this PO, again, says 2301 Brooklyn Avenue on it. So, I believe it was Matt that went ahead and purchased this... Um, this surge protector so we could have a specific one on his truck. So if I look at the buyer, the buyer says Matt on it. So I will take this packing slip and that's something that I don't know just by looking at here. So I'm gonna write Matt on here so I know who's purchasing it. 
And then I know for a fact that he was actually purchasing it for truck stock. So I'm going to write that on there as well, truck stock, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight the totals to it down at the bottom. I'm going to highlight my invoice number and my PO, okay? So Matt called me and he asked me if he could purchase this for his truck so that he could sell it. Well, I'm going to go look and I'm going to do something right now that I'm going to say only I can do, okay? Which is I'm going to go type in surge protector and only one surge protector pops up, okay? Which is the one that's in the computer right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little different. And I'm going to show you something in here that, again, only I can do. I'm not going to allow anybody to do this, but I'm going to show you how I do it. So what I'm going to do is I went to item list and I'm going to hit inventory part. And I am going to create a part number. So my part number on here. Um, so my other one was... AC320, now I gotta go back to it. Uh, let me get out of here for a second. Go back to my purchase order. So my original purchase order um, item number, I'm sorry, is AC320-45. So 45 was originally the cost of this particular part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another item and I'm gonna call it AC320-222. So add inventory part and my line item, I mean my part number is going to be AC320-222. So the AC320 is going to be air conditioned part number 320-222 is going to be my cost on it was $222. So then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a description of what that particular says on here and it's going to be identical of what is actually on my ticket from Coburn's as well. So this is going to be a, a Mars surge protector. And I'm going to take my cap lock off right here. And that's going to be surge protector. And I'm going to put 20,000 amps. One twenty to two forty volt. And because that is a very high amp surge protector, this one is actually for the um, the main panel as opposed to your disconnect box. I'm gonna I would leave this as a stock item as opposed to serial. My category is gonna be AC parts. I'm going to change the blower motor to miscellaneous. That's on my subcategory is going to be miscellaneous. Last purchase price is going to be $221.94. And I'm going to tab this down. And as I tab it down, as I go through, my markup for it is at 62, which would be 62% of it. It's not actually going to be that. It's actually going to be my purchase price <clears throat> or my sales price of that particular item is going to be $221.94, $221.94 times 1.5 equals $332.91 and we're going to hit plus $200 for labor, $532.91. So, 532.91 is going to be my sale price and I'm just going to say 533. All right. So that puts my price A price B as 533 uh, post to equipment I'm going to put yes. I'm, so when I post it to equipment, that means it's going to go in my equipment as though they actually have a surge protector. And post a history, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Income account is going to be 
Uh, service is going to be sales labor. 0027 is going to be my sales account. And then my cost of goods sold, inventory account, and cost of goods sold uh, would be 5000 I believe it is. Cost of goods sold, and then my same is going to be 5000 So inventory account and cost account has got to be identical. Income account is sales. Then I go to my manufacturer, and then manufacturer, I'm going to just type in Mars. Uh, model number of that particular Mars is going to be in 83905, 83905, and I'm picking that right up off of here. Uh, type, and th these are all for equipment, so literally I could just put in here surge protector. And from there, go back to general, and from there I can save it. Now that I've saved it, then I will go ahead and I am now going to pull that purchase order back up again. And I am going to now type in AC320. And then I'm going to have the one that I actually just put in there, AC320-222. And now my total price is $221.94. So all I did was as I added this particular surge protector as an inventory part because Matt purchased it to put on his truck. So I put it on his, I just actually added it as a line item that we can actually sell at a later time as well too, okay? So now this is a packing slip, so I can't do anything other than that, but I can come down here and I can put the invoice number down in here, 406 My entry date, 12-14. So that was my entry date. Uh, printed 12-19. Order date is right here, 12-14. So I'm going to leave my entry date as 12-14. Everything in there stays the same. So here I can leave this just like it is. I am not going to hit save and bill. I'm not going to hit save and receive because I can't do that off of a packing slip. So I just hit save. And all I did was I just saved my changes is all I did. That invoice is now done and gone. Okay, so now I come back to this one, and this is a, again, go to search. Above the blue line is a white line there, and I am going to type in uh, a PO, which is 26656, 26656. That's actually a vendor credit, 26656, which I put it in the wrong line here. Copy, I'm going to paste it up at the top. 26656 and it gives you a purchase order right here gives you a dispatch gives you an invoice I'm gonna click on that and then it says right here even though it said purchase order on it it's actually a vendor credit so right here it says vendor credit 26656 this is from Coburn's which is Coburn's now this is an invoice so an invoice I can complete this particular job this uh, invoice here and completely do everything so I want to highlight the things that are on here. I want to highlight my total, which is negative 169.73. I want to highlight uh, the circuit board on here. I want to highlight my PO on here. And I want to highlight the invoice number, the credit number on there, and also the date on there. Now, 169.73. is my total for the credit. That's cool. My memo down at the bottom for my credit invoice is going to be CM, which I'll capitalize that, CM, uh, 406201, 406201575. Now, remember, I'm going to copy this because I didn't do it on the last time and I had to redo it. So I'm going to copy that and just hold on to it. Now, the job is 50 Flamingo, so I'm going to write that on here, 50 Flamingo, and then that says warranty part, so warranty, I'm going to write that on there as well here too, and it is a credit, so we will then have to take this, go to our spreadsheet, find the spreadsheet, find this, and then 
complete everything on the Excel sheet for our warranty job. And therefore, this shows that we got our $169 back for this particular part. This here, picked up, boom, delivered. We delivered it to them. Uh, Beth is the buyer. Um, everything is done here. So now, because this is an invoice, I can now finish this off with everything on here. And I can hit Save, Enter, Return, Receipt. Then I want to go Returning 1, Quantity 1. Return by. Eric, I'm doing this. Um, your total is 169.73 warranty dispatch number here, and then I'm going to hit save and bill. Do you wish to mark the purchase order as billed? Yes, I do. Then it's asking you for the invoice number. That's why I copied the invoice number off the memo down at the bottom. I'm going to paste the memo on there. What date do I want on here? The date that I want is the invoice date, which is going to be 12:16. I'm going to hit OK, and that's done. Now, so this is going to, I'm going to write on here, build, and then I'm going to write received on here. Nobody has to do anything else to this particular invoice anymore, and it's done. It's over with. And I'll, okay, so what still needs to be done to this particular deal, which I'm going to put a note on here because we're in transition of people right now doing POs, and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this video. So I'm going to put a note on here. Need to update Excel sheet. Now, I'm the only one who knows that we need to update the Excel sheet for this particular one. So I'm going to put that on there. So this can't be like completely like put into a folder somewhere in a file cabinet and filed away. That's why I put this on here because there's something else that needs to be done. At this point in time, I'm just doing a video on POs. I'm not doing that part right now, which I will do it at a later time. So I'll put that on the side and that one's over with. Our next one is a PO of 26655. 26, so I pull that one up and I do purchase order on it. And that comes up with warranty parts. It's got a blower motor on it. We're going to say it was delivered. This is a warranty. Now, this is an invoice again. It's not a packing slip. So, I'm going to complete this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my credit memo at the bottom. And that is credit memo 406 201 559. I'm going to copy that credit memo because I'm going to be able to complete this. I'm going to copy that. My total price is $339.74. That is correct all the way through here. This again is 50, from, from, ah, 50 Flamingo. So I'm putting the address on here so we know that somebody did this. I am highlighting all the stuff that should be highlighted on here, which is the total amount is the invoice number and actually the date of 1216 as well too. So this credit memo is for a completely different part which was a blower motor. There's nothing on here that I have to do. I have now I have the invoice number in here. I have an invoice here. So this is ready to hit save and enter return receipt. I hit that. I hit return by. I hit uh, Eric on it. I hit quantity as one I am returning that I go ahead and I hit save and bill now you have not specified any quantities I haven't clicked off of my quantity so since I did not I clicked one but I didn't click off of it so it didn't register it now I can go back to save bill do you wish to mark the purchase order as billed I hit yes I right click I paste the invoice number that I had copied on there 
I changed my date from 1219 to 1216 because that's the actual date that's on the invoice here. I hit OK. Then I write on here, build and received. So this particular one is done. Nobody has to ask about what is done to this invoice. There's nothing anybody has to do to it. It says it on here. It's done. It's complete. Okay. Last one on here on this particular deal. I'm going to key in uh, PO26678. 26678. Purchase order. Um, on this particular one as well, because this was a vendor credit, we have to go back to it. I forgot something on here. We got to go back to it. I got to find my pen. What I do with it? There it is. Same thing as the other one. I have to put on here. Need to update Excel sheet. And I am going to put that on here as well. I know there's something else that needs to be done here, which I'm going to do at a later time. And we'll do a video on that as well too. So I'm back to this one here. Now this is I am returning a condenser and I am re I'm returning two condensers. So I'm going to try something just to show that it's probably not going to work on here, but we're going to see if it actually is going to work. Now, my serial numbers, because this is what I'd said on the other ones, is not going to work. You can't return the serial numbers, a serialized item on here. And we're going to show what's going to happen if you try to do it. So my serial number is going to be W2422. 2422. And this is for the 24, yeah. 2422-7202-72902. And my serial number on the other one is going to be W342-111247. Okay, I got that on there. So now, quantity is one. Remember, this is a vendor credit. So I am returning this particular item here. So in order to make this correct... My total, 942.66.220873, has got to equal 3159.39, which is the total I have at the bottom here, okay? So now, I am going to say, okay, I'm, I, I delivered this back to Coburn's. So now I'm going to hit Save, Enter, Return, Receipt. So quantity is going to be 1. Quantity is going to be 1 on both of them. Return by Eric, and I'm going to see if this is going to go through because this is not what I preach and teach right here to do it like this. But we're going to see if it's going to go through. So I'm going to copy my serial number. Remember, no spaces in there. Copy my next one. All right, everything else is in there. So now... Here comes the moment of truth. I'm going to hit save and bill. Now, back history on this. I purchased these two condensers a couple days back. I purchased the condensers and then figured out that actually I had already purchased them for the job. And I had the condensers somewhere else. Therefore, I didn't need them. So I called Chad and I said, hey, I need to return them. You know, I purchased them by accident and I already got them. So we returned them over there. Here's my vendor credit for it. There's my $3,100 to credit back. So now I am trying to return a serialized item. These are two serialized items that I am trying to return. Now I'm going to hit save and build and let's see if it works. Do you wish to march them? Yes, as build. A serial number you provided for returning a part does not exist in the inventory. This is what happens every time you try to do this. So you hit OK. Then you have to go exit out of here. If you exit, you will lose your current unsaved transaction. Yes. So I went ahead and got back out of it. So now I go key that PO back up in here again, 26678. I go back to the PO again, which is the vendor credit. I got to go back and put everything back in because everything I did, I just lost it all. So I go back in and I put my CM down at the bottom. Actually, I can probably just highlight it. Let's see, and paste it. CM 342, now is a whole different one, okay. So we're gonna go CM 
406 202 045. That's my memo on here. Now I'm going to do it the correct way. That was a, a way that I showed you that we just can't do it like that. So now what I'm going to do on here is I am going to save the description of this particular one. Copy and I'm going to remember RA 1424 AJ1. Okay. So actually what I can do is I can do this. I can copy this model number, copy it, and then I can bring it over here to the description and I can hit paste on it and I can space that out a little bit. And I already have the model number on this one, which has a serial number on it as well. This serial number is going to be a W. 242227-2902-2902. So now, everything I have in here. So now I can go ahead and I can copy this whole description. Now I'm going to change the item number to miscellaneous equipment. I'm not going to use the serialized item. I'm going to use miscellaneous equipment right here. Select it. Come right here. And I'm going to hit paste. So everything that I just put in there, I got back here again. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this one now. And then I'm going to change this one to miscellaneous equipment. And the reason that you could not return that serialized item that was in there, it was telling you that the serial number is not in inventory. Well, it's not because we never put it on a job anywhere, so you can't return it. What is it on a job? So that's why I have to return it as miscellaneous equipment. Now I have everything in there. I got my model, my invoice number down at the bottom here. I have my prices here, and my prices are going to come to. Uh, 863.24 on the top one, 863.24, and then my bottom one is going to be 2020, 2022.65. So, therefore, now my total down at the bottom is 2885.89, which is not the correct amount, it's 3151.39. So, what I have to do is I have to take my 863.24. And I got to make it add tax to it. So 863.24 times 9%, 940.94. 940 then I got to do it for this one here as well, too. And I'll probably be pennies off. 22.65 times 9% plus 22. 22, nope, right here. I got to do it under price, not amount. 2204.69, and let's see what the total comes to now. 3145.63. So I still need, so it's probably going to be 9.2 or something like that as the tax as opposed to 9. Uh, so I still got uh, 3145.63 and then 3151. So I still got six dollars and some odd cents to make up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the math on this, and I'm going to do 3151.39, which is on this invoice. I'm going to put that as a plus, and then 3145, 3145.63. Uh, um, as a negative, my total is five dollars and seventy six cents. So, what if I add two dollars on here, make that non forty two, and then I add three dollars and seventy six on here? So, three point seven six plus twenty two oh four point six nine plus is twenty two oh eight forty five, twenty two oh eight. 8.45 enter and I got a whole bunch 2208.45 tab then my total is 3151.39 that is my total on here 3151.59 uh, so all this is correct now I have a quantity of one I am going to be returning this now I can go ahead hit save return receipt 
Return by Eric. This is not a serialized item, so I just got to go quantity one, and then quantity one is not a serialized item. But remember, I do have the serial number in here, so I can always refer to my description with the serial numbers in here. Then from here, I, I copied my uh, invoice number down at the bottom. I'm going to hit save and bill. Do you want to save it? The answer is yes. I'm going to right click it, hit paste. Well, since I saved that memo down at the bottom with, I've saved other stuff, so therefore I messed that up. So now I got to take the invoice number off that I pasted on there, which is the wrong one. And I've got to go ahead and put CM 406 202. 045 and now I have the correct invoice number correct invoice number date 1216 I have to change the date 1216 and then I hit OK and then I am now going to take this invoice here and I am going to highlight my invoice number my date I'm going to highlight my PO I'm going to highlight my serial numbers on here model numbers on there my total price at the bottom and then I'm gonna write on here returned and I'm gonna put on here build and received so everything is done on this particular invoice and there's nothing else we have to do to it it's done and over so this is return receipts for Coburn's and this is how we did it. So the only thing we still have to do with those Coburn's invoices that I just did is literally go to the Excel sheet, which I'll show in another video. And from that Excel sheet, we can actually continue because when we did a purchase and then we did a warranty part on it, we put it on the Excel sheet and then we follow that Excel sheet all the way to the very end till we actually get our credit back. So that's where we are. We're going to do another uh, video here in just a few minutes. And I'm going to go over some of the Lennox invoices on some of the stuff that we have right here.